Welcome to the second part of the tutorial on regional contour. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create the regional contour. The regional contour can be made from any or a combination of the following. One or an average of shoreline, an historical shoreline, a bathymetric contour, or an imagery. There are several ways to do the original contour, and you could, for example, merge or average several shoreline together using an external GIS software or MATLAB, and then importing back into SMS the same way we did for the initial shoreline by closing all the gaps and removing the nodes. Another way to produce the contour is by using the built-in smoothing function of the SMS. I've created this regional contour not long ago, and I will walk you through the steps I took to generate it for this project. This is Onslow Bay, North Carolina. The bay is about 100 miles of shoreline. The project was for a portion of the bay, but for this example, let's pretend we're making the regional contour for this entire bay. I've loaded into the workspace some imagery and several historical shoreline dating back from the 1800s. I also have three initial shorelines that I have already processed. Let me change the transparency of this image so we can see the shoreline better. I inspected those shorelines and determined which feature of the coast are permanent and which one seems to change with time. One thing I notice is that the inlets are very dynamic. There are some areas where the inlets are migrating, like in this region here. In other areas, some inlet closed or open, impacting the downward shoreline significantly. In other area, the inlet channel seems pretty stable. The other thing I notice is that this feature is in here in the middle of the grid. It will be important to preserve this feature since it probably altered the wave field. I've decided that I will use a 1997 initial shoreline as a base for my original contour and apply a smoothing function to remove the small irregularities. So what I'll do is I will duplicate this coverage so that I have a copy to work with. Before doing any type of smoothing, it is important to redistribute the vertices evenly. As you can see, the points in this coverage are very dense here and far apart here. If I want the smoothing to be applied evenly, I need a regularly spaced point. So I'll right click on the arc using the Select Feature Arc and select Redistribute Vertices. I'm going to use 100 feet in this case since I don't need a lot of resolution here. I will duplicate this coverage again because I'd like to test different smoothing windows. In this first coverage, I will use a large number of points in the smoothing window let's say 500 points. So we'll go ahead and rename this coverage to 500 points space 100 feet apart. It's about a smoothing window a little less than 10 miles. Let's apply that and see how it looks like. Overall it looks like we're smoothing out important portions of the permanent shoreline, like this headland or this shoreline here in the northern portion of the bay that is really pulled toward the sea. So that would be a good example of a regional contour that is too smooth. I will repeat this exercise, but this time let's use a small number of neighbor, such as 10. That would be a thousand foot smoothing window. Now, as opposed to the previous example, it seems like the contour is following the shoreline too closely and includes feature like this fillet that should not be included. Now let's do this again with the 100 points. That would be a 2 mile smoothing window. You see that it does follow the overall shoreline shape, but it does not include the small irregularities caused by the inlet. The only issue was that it looks like it is smoothing out the headland a little too much. So what you can do is that you can either manually move the points with the Select Feature Vertex tool, or you can apply a different smoothing window size to different part of the arc. So to do that, you'll have to divide your arc into several segments by converting the vertex into node. Then you can smooth the segment separately and convert the node back to vertices once you are done smoothing. Later down the road, you will always have the opportunity to make necessary modification to your contour if needed be. 
Once you're happy with your contour, delete the unwanted coverages. Assign the type of coverage to Gencades. And then right click on the arc, go to Attribute, and select Original Contour. Don't forget to save your project. At this point in your project, you should have two coverages, one with the initial shoreline and one with the original contour. As you might recall from the tutorial on conceptual model, to produce a Genki grid, all the data related to a project must be in one single coverage. So what I'll do is that I will merge those two coverages into one. Select the first one, and holding the control key, select the other one. Right click and hit Merge Coverages. I recommend that you keep the original coverage in case you need to go back to it. So I will hit No here. Now you have one coverage that contains both the regional contour and the initial shoreline. There is a lot more to learn about the original contour, especially about how it is treated in the model and when it is okay to modify it. If you would like to know more, I recommend that you read the chapter 4.6 of the Recommendation and Requirement Report. It goes in great details on the effect of the original contour on the model, and it will probably answer any questions or doubt you might have about the original contour. While this complete the tutorial on original contour, consult the SERP website for links to publication and to the Jankid wiki page. Thank you for watching.